everyone, welcome back to the Everton Career Mode, it's episode 11 and this one is gonna be a cracker guys. In our previous episode, we won against Bristols in the quarterfinals and advanced to the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Now we know that it's gonna be Arsenal against West Ham, Arsenal actually beat out Liverpool and then it's gonna be us against Chelsea and guys this is gonna be tough because I can honestly say out of all the teams we've played so far, Chelsea is the most difficult to play against. They're the most difficult to create chances against and we're going to have to figure out a way to beat them. This is not going to be easy. They are so, so solid defensively. We're going to have to figure that out. That's going to be in the next episode. In this episode, we face West Ham, Man United and Crystal Palace. And all these games are just so important. There's only nine games left in the season. If you look at the league table, we're so close. We're in, in a decent position, I think, because if we win the games in hand, we're only one point away from Spurs. We're only one point off of Wolves. We're actually in front of Man United. And if we can additionally get good results against Wolves and Man United in the next two episodes, I, I believe we can get Europa League. I think we can just about do this, guys. But every game is going to be important. Picking up points against every team now is just crucial. And now we face West Ham. They're such a solid team and they have a solid 4-2-3-1. There's not a lot of holes in this team. And I really like the mix of the midfield. They've got Rice who plays that more defensive role. He's so good. Defensive minded player. Suchik is also very good defensively but he's more of a box to box role. He's capable of going forward. And then Ben Rama in front of them is solely focused on that offensive side of the ball. They've got Mikel Antonio who's a very physical striker, but they also brought in Luis Muriel in the transfer window. Maybe even an improvement on Mikel Antonio, very fast and very good finishing. They're very dangerous. They also have the likes of Vlasic up front. They got Bowen. They've got a bunch of players who can do damage. I feel like we just have to play our game though, because in the first game we tied 2-2 at home. It was a bunch of individual errors. We actually were the better side. I'm playing our strongest squad here because they're fit. I'm playing Holgate, who seems to be our my starting CB right now in front of Godfrey. Godfrey's a little bit error prone and he doesn't play well out of the back. So I'm going to play my strongest side and there's no particular weakness here. We'll just have to see how the game plays out and sort of find little weaknesses. Find a way to sort of bypass their strengths. If Suchik and Rice are their strengths, maybe we just wait for Suchik to go forward a little bit, maybe hit them on the counter. We'll see how the game flows and what presents itself. All right, guys, here we go. Now it is make some noise as we welcome our visitors, Everton, and your Hammers, West Ham United. And the West Ham United lineup. Okay, so I slowed this first clip down because I think it's a great opportunity to show how specific player instructions work within our Conseil Chau system. You're going to see Richarlison drift wide here in a second, which means we can play the ball to him, but more importantly, it vacates space for Alan St. Maximin to go and have a shot on target. What it also did was it attracted Ogbonna towards Richarlison and gave Alan St. Maximin that little bit of extra room and space to have a clearer shot on target. It's very important in systems where wide midfielders cut in like this to create and have shots on target. Off of this, we have a corner, the ball falls to Richarlison, and guys, we're up 1-0. And what a start, but more importantly, those situations that we created, you want to repeatedly create them. You want a degree of repeatability, because you don't just want to run around like headless chickens in a game. You want some sort of tactic, some sort of structure that is going to give you chances that you've thought out sort of before the game, that took into account the opponent's weaknesses, your strengths, and just in general how you want to play. In this next clip, I speed it up a little bit just to show that in recent games, I've tried to keep possession more a little bit and not play so direct, be a little bit more patient, play around. There's a number of passes here because I felt like we weren't patient enough. This next clip, unfortunately, shows how defensively woeful we are and how many mistakes individually we make here. It's 1-1 in the 41st minute, guys, and I counted three mistakes there. First of all, Keen bull rushed in the midfield for absolutely no reason and didn't sort of keep that defensive shape but even then the ball was played over the top Holgate made a mess of it he was not strong enough 
and Aaron's didn't put a tackle here when Ben Rama finally got the ball. And guys, it's 1-1 off of three individual errors in one play and that's just how it goes sometimes but we need to do our best to eliminate those things. We do very well here in neutralizing Suchek and Rice by playing balls directly in behind them and that's what I'm talking about in terms of sort of tweaks in game. Again here Suchek and Rice are beat because we won a header in midfield and we get another chance. It falls to Decore and we need to be able to get goals like that. I mean, Decore, just smash it. It doesn't happen. We do a very good job in this game as well at switching play that did wonders against West Ham. We cross it in here. They clear it. Okay. But what ends up happening is Alan St. Maximum gets it and again, he drives in centrally. Attracts the CDM. Ducore has enough space. He smashes it, guys. And it's 2-1. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Player instructions working within a Conseil Shao system to sort of get the best out of your players and create repeatable chances just like this. This is like the third chance in the last few games we've created exactly like this. It opens up long shot opportunities, which we just did not have early on in the season. Now, West Ham is a very good team. And they had a lot of opportunities in this game. Again, we did our best defensively, but they were able to play balls like this through Pickford had to be on top of his game, saving shots like that. And again, West Ham plays a very good in the final third. They've got a very good passers. They play the ball around well here. And this one goes just wide, but they were threatening. We played a very varied up system, I'd say. This time around, we play very fast, very direct, vertical play. West Ham does a decent job, but I'm surprised here because Ducouri found himself in acres of space. We play it around at this point, a 1-2 in for Calvert-Lewin, and guys, it's 3-1, and this is exactly what we needed. A confident performance, and we're up 3-1. Calvert-Lewin, cool as you like, clinical finish, and this is exactly what you want to see. It's a simple, uh, uh, when we beat the sort of CDM, and we got into this space, it was really easy to manipulate this 1-2 situation and get him in the box for a decent opportunity. Again, like I said, we were switching the play really well this game, and it profited us because it sort of took the pressure off one side. We play around with it here a little bit, and our crosses were on point today, guys. Calvert-Lewin gets on the end of Dean's whipped cross, and it's 4-1. We are flying, guys. We are flying. We haven't won too many games recently only one in the last four we've had defensive problems I mean we are just woeful defensively over the last few games I think we lost like 12 goals in four games or something it's ridiculous but we were able to find sort of our offensive rhythm here and we have one last opportunity here in the game it's a very similar chance to the first one Dean whips in across the Curry gets on the end of it and it's saved by Areola Unfortunately, we weren't able to get a fifth here, but we were flying in this game. And again, Ducouré has his instruction set on get forward. And these player instructions are really doing exactly what I'm asking them. In the end, guys, we get a result against West Ham. It's 4-1 and we are on a perfect track. The next game is Man United, though. Oh boy. But for now, we do win this game. Alright guys, so Cantwell finished his position switch, he is now a cam, I put him on the advanced playmaker development plan, it's going to increase his weak foot and his stamina which are low, so that's good, and it's also going to further develop his vision, short passing and dribbling which are key at this position. Now as you guys can see, his overall increased from 76 to 78, and that's because he's just suited for this position, but it's a bit of a good thing and a bit of a bad thing. It's good because now he can play that camp position and he's not going to have a negative beside his name. And it's also good because you can put him on this development plan which is catered towards some of the things I want. The bad news is, is that because his overall increased, I can't juice as much out of him because his potential stayed the same. So I can only increase him now from 78 to whatever potential he is. So two overalls less. Which is why in the future I may change him back to left mid. He can already play the camp position, so it's fine. And after I'm done with this development plan, I'll put him on a different development plan, maybe increase his speed 
And because this overall will probably go back down, I will be able to then juice as much out of Cantwell as possible. In terms of some of the other things happening in our club, Begovic has been asking for a contract for a while now, and he actually went to the board and behind their back told them about this. They came to us and like, yo, give this guy a new contract or find him a different club. And honestly, I don't want to deal with this. First of all, I don't like players going behind my back like this. Second of all, I don't want dressing room problems and I definitely don't want problems with the board. So I decided to terminate Begovic's contract. We're going to pay the the fee involved with this will take a little bit of a financial hit here, whatever. I don't want to have this issue. And we have Hilton and Virginia back coming up from loan next season. So we have players for this position. If we need a better goalkeeper, we'll dip into the market. This problem is done. In terms of our scouting instructions, I wanted to update this because now I feel like we've addressed our wide midfielder problem. We've addressed our right back problem. In terms of what I'm looking at the team and in terms of what we need, we're leaking goals. It's crazy how many goals we're losing this season. I want to shore that up because offensively we're flying. I think we're, we've scored third most goals in the league so far. Richarlison, Calvert-Lewin, the wide midfielders are chipping in. It's great. Defensively, we're woeful. We're, we're garbage. So we need to address this. I want someone in the midfield, first of all. We have Allen, we have DeCorey, but they're both aging and I want someone slightly younger who will really make a dent in the squad. I've set a few instructions here. Hopefully this player will be defensive minded because like I said, I'm trying to shore this part of the game up. So defensive midfielders, central midfielders, a bunch of instructions here. I also want to look for a center back because I want to strengthen our defense as much as possible. Hopefully left footed because we don't have a natural left footer. Again, tall, strong because I want him to be able to get the headers. I feel like in certain games against like Villa, I remember we really struggled with this. And the last instruction I want to do is I want to look for strikers and not because I want to replace Richarlison or Calvert-Lewin. I just think they're doing so well that eventually a team will come in, a top, top team like Real Madrid or City or something like this. They'll lay down the 150 or something and we're going to lose them. And I want to be prepared and I want to bring in a really good replacement for this. Now, guys, this is sort of for the future because we still have a little bit to go until our next transfer window. But I want you guys to start thinking about it. Maybe give me some comments. Give me some ideas. Again, like you've had such good ideas so far. I've brought in some players off the list that you've guys given. I'm set on bringing in Ivan Tony, Brandon Williams as cover for left back and for striker. Give me your input, guys. I want this to be our career mode, not just mine. Okay, guys, here we go. On to the big game of this episode. It's Man United. If you look at the table... If we win this game, we're four points ahead of United. If we win that game in hand, that's seven points and seven games remaining. I think at that point, we would end up higher than United. I really do. And if you look at it, we're very close. We're on the heels of Wolves and Spurs. Like I said, one point if we win our game in hand. We can do this, guys. And I think there's a unique opportunity here. And I'll explain in a second. United set up in a 4-2-3-1. Very similar to West Ham. It's very solid. And... They're capable of play off the counter, which I know at heart United want to play off that counter. But they're also capable of, of controlling the game. They have a great squad. But they're rotating hard, I have a feeling, because I think they're still in the Champions League. And this is the squad they put out. And this is what I'm talking about. This is a unique opportunity. Because first of all, they're playing Pogba and not Van de Beek in the midfield. He's a great player and just creative. It, it's buckets of creativity, but 59 defensive awareness. And this is going to be important. They're playing Fred, who's very mobile. He's very decent defensively, but he's 52 strength. And again, that can be manipulated. They're playing Lindelof and not Varane. That's huge. If you pair Varane with Maguire, that's a very good partnership. Lindelof and Maguire can be shaky at times. The most important thing here is they're playing Dalot and Tellez and not Juan Basaka and Shaw. That's huge. If you look at their defensive awareness and stand tackle, both of these players are mid maybe high 70s in those stats, that's average. That's an average Premier League stat, or an average Premier League defender. We need to exploit this. They're just going to be suspect defensively here. They really are. And on top of things, 
They're playing Cavani and not Ronaldo. And I know that's, oh, it's still Cavani. Yeah, but it's not Ronaldo. So if we go forward a little bit, it'll be a little bit less punishing. Now, obviously, they have great players. They still have Rashford, who's just electric. They brought in Serge Gnabry. His pace, his dribbling, that will just torch you if you're not careful. And Bruno Fernandes pulling the strings. It's very dangerous, and, and this is risky. We're towing the line here, but if we can get that win, I wouldn't suggest this unless it was an opportunity and... And I feel like we have to go for this. We have to have a go here. Will you please make some noise as we welcome our visitors, Manchester United, and your very own Toffees Everton. And Everton line up the Guys, we took a page out of Bielsa's book and look how we close the Man United players down here. Every time they get the ball, one of our players is closing down. They have no time on the ball. It was relentless. We were like a pack of wolves. And every time we got it back, it was one or two quick passes, quick counters, vertical play. And right off the kickoff, we get our first chance. It's blocked. Man United tries to come back with a counter, but we relentlessly pressure them. It was nonstop aggression. Sure, they got the ball passed sometimes, but the desire to get back was there. The intensity was so good. Ducore nips it. And again, we're on our bikes. Two or three quick vertical passes this time. Calvert-Lewin is released. He's one-on-one -on -one and he bangs it in, guys. 1-0. What a start against Man United. And our tactic pays dividends. What a play here. This is amazing stuff. This is exactly what I was talking about. And the defense was suspect yet again from Man United. You can see Maguire was turning like an ocean liner here. Backpedaling. Tellez is nowhere to be found. And Calvert-Lewin buries it. We shell shock Man United. We come out with such intensity, but it didn't stop there, guys, because like I said, once we smelt blood, we needed to go for it. And again, right off the kickoff, we pressure them. We close down man to man. It's just full intensity, especially for the first half here. And Man United tried to press through it. At times, they were successful. Like I said, this is a dangerous tactic. Sometimes it can backfire. Cavani was able to find some space and Pickford had to make a great save. It was back and forth, and we continued to pressure. Man United tried to counter. They didn't do so successfully early on because Aarons was having a banger of a game. His defensive awareness and his speed is amazing. This is exactly why we brought him in. We counter this time. Gakpo throws it into the box. Calvert-Lewin can't get to it. He pressures. De Gea has to clear. We get the second ball. We were getting second balls all game long here. The intensity was just incredible. They play it around here. Play, play Pogba for a fool. Ducure nice and clever. Gakpo in. Richarlison 2-0. Oh my goodness. What a start. Man United is just on their knees. Defensive shambles all over the place. But we're up 2-0 guys in a crucial game against Man United. And this tactic is working. I had a feeling it could work, but I didn't think it was work as well. Look at this cross in the middle of the two center backs and Richarlison gets on the end of it. It's 2-0. Yes! This is such a good game from us so far and Man United cannot cope with us. And again, we get the ball back and look at this, guys. Look at this next play. Look at Tellez is in no man's land. He, Aarons has acres of space. Where is the right back? We cross it in and it's 3-0. It's 3-0 against Man United in the 35th minute. This is crazy stuff. And the scenes at Goodison right now, the fans are getting a treat. And this tactic is dismantling Man United. Absolutely dismantling them. Acres of space. Look at this. He has time to look up. He has time to drink a coffee, read a newspaper. He throws it in and Calvert-Lewin beats out Harry Maguire, who's backpedaling a little bit. This is just insane scenes. Insane scenes. And Man United is just... You can see they, they tried to stay compact there because they're, they didn't know what's going on. They're like, let's drop deep. Let's be compact here. Pogba plays a lazy ball into midfield. This is right off the kickoff, right after that first, that goal we just scored. And again, we're like a pack of wolves. Like I said, it's a cross in. It bounces off Allen's back. It's a shot. It falls to Allen and it's a 4-0. It's 4-0 within the first 40 minutes. It's it. Wh I, what is happening here? I literally can't describe what I'm witnessing here 
It's the fall of Man United within the first 40 minutes. We're up 4-0. We, we're showing we can play with the big boys, guys. This is amazing stuff. And it was like this the entire game. In the second half, Ducore here gets a chance. He, he puts it on target, but Ducore was just a beast. He was everywhere. He was closing down. He was nipping balls and he was running forward. His intensity, it was just insane this game. A 10 out of 10 performance. And again here, Ducore gets on the end of it. De Gea makes a save. Man United could not get one chance this game. That first chance Cavani had, that's it. Until sort of the 60th minute here where they finally get a counter. Pogba plays a really nice ball. He does have this in his locker. Serge Gnabry gets it and... Two of our players, Holgate and Aarons, couldn't get it. He manages to get a really good shot off here, but this should have been cleaned up by those two players. They did very poorly here. And Nabry, I mean, that's a really good shot. Pickford really had nothing to say here. And it's 4-1. And then late on in the game, Man United slowly managed to get one or two opportunities. And I can't blame our players here. This is a really good pass by Rashford. And Gnabry puts it in the top corner. No chance for Pickford. It's 4-2. And... But it didn't feel like Man United was in this game at all. They got one or two chances which they capitalized because they have great players. And, and maybe my energy waned and that's why they got these goals. But either way, we get this win, guys. And what a win it was. Just amazing. I have no words. We destroyed Man United and gave Everton fans at Goodison Park the game of the season. This was my best game of the season in terms of play and in terms of tactics. We get a crucial result here against Man United. Guys, that was huge. Absolutely huge. Look at this position we're in now. One game in hand, if we win it, that's seven points above United with six games remaining. I really believe we can finish above them now and we are on the heels of Wolves and Spurs. Just one point, guys. So close. We're on to our next game here against Palace. This is going to be a simple one in terms of tactical analysis. It's a 4-3-3. It's going to be counter-attacking football. We did well in the first game. We limited them to very little chances. They got a fortuitous goal from Kuyate when Dean got injured there. I think we should be able to win this. It's a home game now. We just have to watch out for their pace out wide. They play Otzen Edward out there. They play Zaha. That can cause trouble for any team. They've got an engine in Kuyate in the back to support this. They've got Connor Gallagher who can chip in with goals. They're a decent side, so we do have to watch out. But I really think we can get a win here, guys. I'm going to put Godfrey in. That pace will help neutralize Zaha and Odson Edward if it gets out of hand. I'm subbing in Townsend for Gakpo because I'm thinking ahead here for the Wolves game. I'll need him there. Fresh. I don't say Maxim and I'm going to drop because I'm playing that 4-3-3. So it's going to be Richarlison, Calvert-Lewin and Gakpo. So I'll play him this game. And then I'm going to sub out Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin during the game if it's going well. And they'll be able to... Be semi-fresh for that Wolves game. That's an important game, but we need points in every game here, so it has to be a decent squad here. All right, guys, let's make it three out of three wins here. Let's go. Please welcome our visitors, Crystal Palace, and your very own Toffees Everton. The Toffee Men line up as follows. Things have been clicking for us guys and especially for this man right here, Calvert-Lewin who puts us 1-0 in front against Palace. Amazing start for us but he has been so good. Five goals in the last three games, important goals may I add, against Man United last game. But the attacking positioning, the awareness and the desire to get this ball is amazing. But honestly all our players have been showcasing their skills. Alan St. Maximin. I love this guy. He is so smooth and just so amazing at dribbling. He sets up for Charleston. Guaita makes a save. We have a corner. As a result, we throw it in and Ducore gets on the end of it. Another save. Ducore has just been a beast recently too. Everyone is playing their best football. But the deciding factor for this game was this moment right here. Miojevic brings down Calvert-Lewin just outside the box. And it's a red card, guys. 
just madness from Miojevic, and it was really a reckless tackle. There's going to be a replay here. You'll see it was a very bad tackle here. And Crystal Palace, it goes south for them. They were already struggling. Dean gets a free kick. He hits the crossbar. Oh, that would have been so nice. That would have been Dean's first goal off a free kick. That was a missed opportunity. We recollect the ball, recycle it, and try again. We move the ball around. It really gets easy when you have 10 men. Townsend gets it in the box and he's brought down. It just goes from bad to worse here for Palace. I mean, the defending is just absolutely shambolic from Palace this game. And you can see this is a clear foul. He just barrels into Townsend. It's a penalty, guys. Richarlison steps up. And here we go, guys. We've been practicing this. And Richarlison puts it in the top corner. It's 2-0, guys. And we are coasting. Unfortunately, in the second half here, guys, I had to have got complacent. There's no other explanation for this. Because with a red card and up 2-0, I just lost focus. Palace plays it around, even with 10 men. Nice patience from them, to be fair. It was really nice. Benteke gets a one-time opportunity here and puts it past Pickford. And it's frustrating, guys. This goal specifically, I really don't like losing goals when we're up. And they have a red against an inferior team like Palace. And it really ticked me off. And I pressured them right from the kickoff after I regained the ball, two passes in, it's a wide open gap for Richarlison and it's 3-1 and that's exactly what we should have been doing right from the start of the second half and not waiting for them to score to wake up. It's a great finish from Richarlison and honestly he was unplayable this game and honestly it was right from the start, not even after they were down to 10 men, Richarlison was just special this game, over here he skips past his man. He gets a curler, it's a post, saved partly by Guaita, but he was honestly unfortunate not to grab a hat-trick in this game, and it was just really easy against Palace once that red card hit. It was really easy, Ducore trying his luck here, it's another save by Guaita, he's been really good this game, and then later on in the game, another piece of madness, it's another red card, two red cards for Palace, and I'm thinking... Vieira, is this how you have your guys playing? Because they play dirty and so unconcentrated and it just fell from there for Palace. It was just total shambles. Gray gets another goal. It's 4-1. I mean, you can't expect. It's 11 against 9 here. It's so easy to manipulate this. Gray gets it. He makes it 4-1. And, and again, it was just so easy. Brooksy gets in here. He gets his first goal of the season. It's 5-1, guys, and we are coasting to victory here. We got it. 5-1. This is amazing stuff. What an amazing episode. We've scored 13 goals this episode, got three wins, and we are so close to Europa League. We made a very, very important step towards it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned to the next episodes because we are closing in on the end of the season here. It's amazing stuff. I'll see you next time.